Okay guys, so I did have a few of you want to see how I collected my maple syrup and talk you through the step-by-step -step process. So I'm actually out getting ready to collect whew, my sap from yesterday. So I thought I would just talk through the steps to that. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you have maple trees on your property or you have someone that has maple trees that will let you tap them. The easiest way to do that is to look at the trees during the summer when they have leaves on them and mark them with a ribbon or something so that they're easy to find when there's no leaves on them, like now. Another good way, at least I've determined for my maple trees here, and I don't know what type they are, but the smaller maples, like, let me see if I can show you. This skinny guy right here is a maple. They have pretty smooth bark, so, but that one's too small to tap. So the easiest way to tell with the big guys is their bark is rough at the bottom, but if you look up, up, up towards the high branches, those are smooth like the young ones are. So that's been the easiest way for me to tell. We mostly have maple and oak back here in this back section. So it's, it's a maple or an oak. I don't have too many other options to go for. Um, so yeah, make sure that you have a maple tree you can tap. The second thing that I would do, and this is what I did, is buy this handy book that I'm gonna show you quick here. So this is the book that I used to get me ready for this entire process. It talks about the supplies you're going to need, how to clean the supplies, it has recipes in it, it talks about the different types of trees you can tap for syrup, which by the way, there are more than just maple trees that you can tap. Um, this was just perfect. This is, for me at least, was the best step-by-step -step guide of how to do this from everything that you need to buy to get ready to do it to the actual syrup making process. So if you're interested, I would really suggest getting this book because it made it really easy for me. Okay, so after you've read through that book a million times and you know how you want to do your setup, the next step is going to be to get supplies. I decided I wanted to go with plastic buckets with lids instead of the metal buckets because this just seemed like the easiest way for me. Do make sure you get food grade buckets if you're going with plastic. I got these from Home Depot. They're pretty cheap and I would highly suggest the lid even if you're not using the tubing system because debris is going to fall in there. You don't want bugs to fall in there. You don't want squirrels getting in there. So bucket, lid, no matter what kind you're getting. Um, make sure you get enough buckets for however many trees you're going to tap. And then also get a few extra buckets to carry the sap back to your house. You don't want to be taking the buckets off of the tree and leaving the sap just drip. So I picked the buckets. Woo. And then I also picked... Um, a kit on Amazon. We actually got two different ones. We got one kit that just had five metal spiles and then we get another kit that had 10 blue like UV re resistant tubes to run the sap out of, 10 spiles and two filters. I will show you what the spiles and the tubing look like. The filter is in the house so I'll have to show you that later. Here is a spile. Here are the tubes. These blue ones are UV resistant, so they just help stop bacteria from growing in there. Um, you'll see, if I remember to show you, on the metal ones, I had to buy tubing and the store didn't have any blue tubing, so I just got clear for this season. But for future years, I'll make sure I have blue tubing for that as well. So you have everything at this point your spiles, your tubing, your buckets, you can go tap. We'll get back to what you need for the maple syrup making later. Um, so you pick out your tree that you want to tap. Um, I want to say they're not supposed to be smaller than 12 inches in circumference, but it might be 18. I will put that information in the description because I don't remember it off the top of my head. But you have to be careful the size of the tree that you're using. You don't want it to be too small. You don't want to over tap them. And you need to make sure the tree is healthy. So you need to look up, make sure there's not a, dead, a lot of dead branches, make sure it just looks nice and healthy. Otherwise, you could get bitter tasting sap 
or you could kill the tree or make it sicker. Um, so then you're going to drill holes. You want to drill them at a little bit of an angle, which we didn't do on this one. This was our first tree, but you live and you learn. So you want to drill it at a little bit of an angle just because gravity will help it flow better. And then you want to drill it to the same size as the spile, which this is 5 sixteenths, I'm pretty sure, and you only want to go in about a half an inch. I'll double check that and also put it in the description. And then again, read the book. This is, I've been doing this for a week, <laughs> so I am not an expert. The book is very, very handy. And obviously Google is great. If you're out in the middle of the woods, you don't have the book on you and you need to remember something. So Obviously, I'm not drilling more holes in this right now to show you guys how to do this because we've already done it. So I'm just going to insert a little clip here of my husband drilling the holes in. So now with checking buckets, I just take the lid off of the one I want to carry it up in, open up the new one. I do keep this snapped shut to keep critters out, but I opened it up because you're on camera. So then collect my sap from the bucket, pour it into my other bucket. I realized I could just switch the lids, but this is how I'm doing it. So, one bucket down, seven more to go. So for this one, I only have one tap because this is a smaller tree. And you can see this is the one where I use the metal spiles and then the tubing that I had to buy. I bought tubing a little bit too big because it's kind of loose on there. But it will work for this season. And I like the metal spiles. You know, they're going to hold up better than the plastic ones, obviously. But the plastic ones came with a whole kit, which is just kind of easier overall. So I'll probably buy more of those for the future. But I'm just going to keep going around collecting my sap and get it up to the house. So I ended up having to collect the sap in two trips this morning. Because I actually had a good amount. My first bucket was almost full. There's about four and a half gallons in it. And then now I'm taking up my second one which has about another three and a half gallons. So long trek up to the house, up the hill. It doesn't look like much of a hill. It's not much of a hill, but it feels like a, a big hill when you're carrying gallons and gallons of sap up a slight hill through the snow. So here I go. <laughs> so now you have hauled your bucket of sap up through the woods, back to the house, and maybe you don't have time to boil it right away. You're wondering what the heck you're going to do with it. You need to keep this cool to keep bacteria or to stop bacteria from growing in it. Um, I, you could put it in a freezer. You've got a big giant fridge. We don't have either of those. So we are utilizing snow banks at the front of the house where it's shaded almost all day to keep them nice and cool. <laughs> And to store our buckets until I have time to boil them down. I've read that it's you can keep them stored cool for about a week. If they're frozen, you know, you can keep them until you're ready to boil it down. So now you're ready to cook it. You need to figure out how you're going to cook it down. A lot of people like to use wood because if you have it on your own property, it's free. And this takes a lot of boiling down. Anywhere from... 40 gallons of sap to get one gallon of syrup to I've read 60 gallons of sap to get one gallon of syrup. This depends on your tree type, its sugar content, all of that, but it's a lot. It's hours and hours and hours of boiling down. Now we have a couple hundred gallon propane tank on our property because our gas or our stove is propane and our water heater runs off of propane. So I figured I would buy a little outdoor burner thing that runs on propane that I can just hook up to our giant propane tank. That way I'm not running out and getting a new small tank every day. The problem I ran into with this is it is set up to hook to the small little propane tanks, 
and we haven't quite figured out how to get it connected to the big one yet. My husband's going to figure that out when he has time off of work. We're going to have to switch out the hoses or get an adapter or something. I will show you what I bought, but for now I've been doing small batches in the house. It's been working okay. I have the overhead fan on, open up some windows to try and keep the humidity down. The main reason people don't like doing it in the house is because it puts off a lot of humidity. Um, we have a humidity monitor in our house and I checked what it was at when I had all the windows shut and it was like boiling like crazy for hours. It was at 70%, which honestly didn't feel bad because it's the end of Wisconsin winter and it's dry, but not super great to keep your house at high humidity all the time. But with having the overhead fan on and the windows open, it was fine. But again, it's putting off a lot of humidity and it is a little bit sticky. So depending on where that's going, you're gonna get sticky stuff all over your walls. In my kitchen, the only spot I found it getting sticky is right above the overhead fan on those upper cabinets, which isn't a big deal to me. I can wipe those down after every batch and it hasn't been a problem. I have seen people say it's taking paint off of their walls and I've seen people say they always do it in their house and they have no problems. So that's kind of up to you how you wanna do it. So this is the burner that I bought to boil my sap down outside. I didn't plan ahead or think too much about it, I guess. This is made to connect to a small propane tank that you can like pick up at a gas station. I want to connect it to my large propane tank that's to my house. There is a line from that that runs to our grill outside. And I was hoping I could just connect this to that line. But we either need to take this part off and see if this will connect directly or get a whole new hose system for this. So once we get that figured out, I'll be using this outside, but for now I'm just doing small batches in the house, which has been working just fine for me. So now we are going to talk about the tools that you need for boiling your sap down to syrup. These are the filters that came with that kit that had the blue UV tubing and the plastic spiles on them. For the future, I would order a third wool filter because I hear that's the best finishing filter to filter out this little called like sugar sand that will just end up floating in the bottom or settling in the bottom of your maple syrup if you can't get it all filtered out really well. But so you're gonna need filters. You're gonna need something to put the filters in. This I talked about in my other video is the part for my ice cream machine, but it fits the filters really well. I labeled them with an S and an F for start filter and finish filter. See this one has more like branches and chunks of things and this one has more of like a fine powdery debris in it then you want a big pot I'm using this big five gallon pot but um, a lot of people have pots like this but imagine it bigger and nicer looking and they call them evaporator pans because this has more surface area it's gonna evaporate quicker I'm not doing hundreds and hundreds of gallons, so I wasn't concerned with that. I wanted something that's going to double function for me. I'm going to use this to boil down tomatoes and for tomato sauce in the summer as well. But um, my goal is to get a gallon of syrup at the end of this season. So I'm only going to be boiling between 40 and 60 gallons of sap, whatever it takes to get me there. The next thing, I do have this little pan that has a little bit wider. Um, it's... I find this one easier for the end because I'm not having to stir all the way down in here. I just have a pan right here. Obviously, a spatula for stirring, which I don't have. Just imagine a spatula. <laughs> this is my finishing pan. I have this. I like to pour it from this into this to measure out how much I have at the end. Um, a thermometer because your sap needs to get up to, it's either 219 or 220 degrees to reach that maple syrup. And this laser thermometer I have found to be the easiest instead of trying to stick my hand in a hot pot. I have this little sifter which I use. So if you were storing your syrup outside and it was really cold, you're going to have a big cube of ice. So you're going to be putting your giant block of ice in here. You can't filter that before you put it in here. So then you use this to scoop out any big debris. And then once it boils down a little bit, then you would go and filter it. If it's not frozen, obviously you can filter it right away before you ever put it in there and you don't have to worry about it. 
Um, and then we also have a hydrometer, which honestly, I have not used yet because I was kind of dumb and I did not really look at how you use these. So I didn't get one that came as a kit. If you get the correct one, I'll show you what this does here, hang on. Okay, so <laughs> the little ones woke up and I had to help them for a second. But this is mainly important if you're going to want to sell your syrup but it's going to tell you the correct levels. You want it between these two. 66 is ideal for maple syrup. Um, it's giving you the correct levels. If there's too little sugar in here, it's going to spoil faster because the syrup has such a high sugar content that it is hard for a bacteria to grow. If it's too high sugar content, it's going to crystallize and you're going to have little hard sugar rocks at the bottom of your bottle. Um, so... You have to dip this in a tube, just like in science class, and then it'll float. I don't have any long skinny tubes. <laughs> this would, well this isn't deep enough, see? And it would require way too much sap to even test it. So I had to go back and buy a tube that should be arriving today so that I can start using that. But honestly, with knowing what temperature it's at and if you've ever made syrup, I do elderberry syrup, I do dandelion syrup, and I've also made caramel. If you've done any of those before, you can kind of tell when it's done because, you know, it gets really, like, foamy and crazy at the end. And, yeah, you'll see that later in the video. But I can tell when it's ready <laughs> before, you know, it gets too far and without needing this. And because I'm not selling it and I'm keeping it in the fridge so bacteria is not really going to get a chance to grow anyways... I'm not too concerned, but this will be fun to use once I have the test tube for it. Now these are the tools you're going to need at the end. I know I already mentioned the measuring cup, but so you're going to have your measuring cup to pour it out of the finishing pan into the measuring cup. That also helps you know how much you have. I have these cute little eight ounce jars, so you're going to need a jar of some kind to put your syrup in. It doesn't really matter what you use. This is just what I liked, and funnel, helpful, not completely necessary. I've been doing it without, but then I just got the funnels in the mail, so now I'm going to do it with the funnel so I don't have to worry about spilling it so much. Um, yeah, these are the things you'll need for the end. Nothing too fancy here, guys. Okay, so now you're going to want to get your sap filtered and poured into your bucket to boil. Remember I said if this is frozen... Just put it in there and you can filter it later, but this isn't frozen because I just collected it this morning and it's already kind of warm outside. So when I take this off, you can see there's some chunks floating in there. That's what we want to capture. Okay, let's see if I can do this without making a mess. <laughs> Putting on a towel is always a good idea. You don't really want sticky stuff all over your floor. So I probably have, this is a five gallon bucket, I probably collected between three and three and a half gallons this morning. So it is 1024 right now, so this has been boiling for about an hour and a half. You can see the line. It's already boiled down a decent amount. It did take a while to start boiling because this is a lot of liquid and it was pretty cold. So I will say if you <coughs> if you wear glasses like I do, this is the point where you may want to switch out to contacts. That's what I've been doing most days I'm boiling because this sticky stuff, every time you come check on your sap is going to get all over your glasses and you're going to be cleaning them like crazy. Also just wanted to show you, this is what my temperature and humidity is at now. It was at about 71 degrees and I think about 54% humidity. So now I have cracked open the windows, the overhead fan has been going and it'll drop down again here or at least it won't get higher. <laughs> so. Definitely putting off a lot of heat and steam doing this inside. 
Okay, so it is 1221 and this has boiled down quite a bit. I'm going to split this in between this pan and my finishing pan. That's just gonna help it finish off boiling quicker here because it'll be, you know, two for one. So rounding out here, getting close to the end. Okay, so it is now 1249. These have both boiled down pretty good. I'm gonna run them <clears throat> through the finishing filter ones now. I might do it again later. And then I'm gonna try and get them combined in this one pot. So. <laughs> we still have quite a bit of boiling left to do this. It really boils down to not a lot of liquid. Oops, don't do that. I'm going to do the other pot, but I can't really hold that in video because the other one is quite heavy. So I'm going to filter this and then I'm going to put it in here with this so I have it all in one spot. Okay, so now you can see this is the point where it's really getting foamy. This is what I was talking about way earlier in the video. You need to pay attention to this now. Like, you don't necessarily have to be stirring it, but you need to be standing by your stove watching it because you may need to start stirring it or turn the temperature down a little bit to keep it from boiling over. Okay, it's getting really close. You can see it bubbled pretty high, so I'm going to take the temperature and see where it's at. Remember, we're aiming for like 219 to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Woo, running a little hot even. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the temperature down a little bit. Buddy. <laughs> Very nice, buddy. So we're getting down there. This still looks pretty runny and a pretty light color to me, so I'm, even though it's been at a good temperature, I'm going to keep it going. Obviously, I'm going to turn the temperature back up a little bit because I turn it too, down too low. It's just kind of a touch-and-go game here to figure out where you need it so you don't boil over and make a mess. So I actually did get the test tube today so that I can use the hydrometer. I am looking for a Brix number of 66. You can see it's just at 65. So. As I thought, I need to boil it just a smidgen longer, but see it's floating. That's how this works. Pretty cool. So I'm just gonna boil this syrup down for another minute or so and then check it again. Okay, it is 150. I just finished boiling down three and a half gallons of maple sap. It took about five hours and I am left with just under a cup of syrup so now I am going to pour that into my containers so I'm actually just gonna to be topping off this one from yesterday because this one didn't finish getting full I don't know that might be like taboo in the sugar world to put two different batches together but it's just for me so I'm doing it anyways bit extra so that'll roll over into well, let me see if I can fit it otherwise it'll roll over into the next container so three days of boiling I did about three and a half to four gallons each of those three days and I ended up with about one container each day these are just little eight ounce containers but yeah here we go that is how I made maple syrup from tapping the trees to the finished product I'm Excited to see how much I get for the year. My goal is to end up with a gallon. And at this rate, I would say that's possible. But thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked the video.